Hello, everyone, and welcome to VM Blog's expert interview series. And I'm happy to announce that we're once again being joined by Karen Gondoli, the CEO of LeoStream. I know we spoke earlier in the year, so it's it's really good to have you back on the show. Well, thanks, David. I'm happy to be here. It's always great to talk with you. Before we dive into things, maybe if you could just give uh, viewers a quick overview of the company. Yeah, sure. So LeoStream, we are a software vendor and what we provide is a remote desktop access platform. So the idea is we want to allow organizations to build an end user computing environment that can satisfy any workflow and really be built to the specifications that that company needs. So whether it's on-prem, hybrid, in the cloud, high performance compute, maybe just task workers, really doesn't matter. We want to give people the flexibility to build a remote access platform that works best for them. Uh, now, I reached out to you because uh, I know LeoStream uh, just made a new announcement. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the announcement and uh, and if there's any new themes to the uh, new features that you have in your upcoming release. Yeah, sure, definitely. So what we announced was the second major release of the LeoStream platform for this year. So it is uh, named 23.2, 2023.2, very inventive naming scheme, I know. But um, it is our second major release. And really the focus here was bringing more customer related functionality to market. And that's always how we design our roadmap. It's always very specific to what are our customers actively asking for. And in this particular release, a lot of that has to do with additional AWS functionality. So new ways to provision EC2 instances, better integration with Amazon Workspace's core, and then some functionality around provisioning new VMs and stopping them when you're done with them so that you're saving costs in the cloud because now you don't have those machines running when no one needs them. So really it's a lot of functionality like that, as well as some real modernizations of the underlying platform. So now it installs on SE Linux, which is great for those security focused organizations that need to run on security enhanced Linux. We're introducing full support for UTF-8 characters, which means global character sets. Doesn't matter who you are, what type of character set you want to use in your desktop names or your pool names. You can now do that in LeoStream. Now, you mentioned Amazon Workspace's core. What are some of the advantages that that brings, that integration brings to LeoStream customers? Yeah, so I mentioned that really LeoStream can be used for any use case, whether it's high performance, task workers, what have you. And, and we've always been about you build your environment by picking your hosting platform and kind of building your entire stack. Well, we realized that for some IT teams, that's a pretty heavy lift. And what the Workspace's core integration adds to LeoStream is this infrastructure as a service offering that Workspace's core gives with the management flexibility and security and the MFA capabilities that LeoStream brings to the fold. So it really is making LeoStream even more applicable to, to everyone. Now that's what we're, our vision is really modernize work for everyone from anywhere so that people can always work from where they need to be. Now I know I, I've known LeoStream for many years. Uh, I know you're a, a customer focused uh, company with this uh, latest release, can you tell us what's been the most customer requested feature? You know, it's it's going to sound like something pretty obvious, but we have all this great capacity control in LeoStream. So you can spin up machines when you need them, you launch them in the cloud, create them on your VMware environment, whatever it happens to be, and then we'll terminate them or power them off when the user is done with them. But the thing we consistently heard from people is, well, you're great at creating VMs, but you leave them running. So now, now for people who want to use LeoStream to pre-provision a pool of resources in the cloud or make sure that they have a couple spare resources for users as, as demand increases, now with LeoStream, you can spin up the machine, launch the new instance, and as soon as it's done provisioning, we'll power it down. So it's kind of in standby mode. And obviously that's huge power savings or cost savings when you're talking in the cloud. So it was just astounding when I looked at this one feature rec record in our system, like the number of customers associated with that, what seems like a seemingly simple thing, power down the VM after you create it, saves me a ton of money. And, and why is being self-hosted such a differentiator for LeoStream and how exactly do these features enhance that initiative? You know, it really goes back to that security 
concept that I, I talked a little bit about. I mentioned that we now install an SE Linux if you're in the government space that's huge or any kind of highly secure environment. And that's the thing, in a highly secure environments, you want to own the deployment. And that's not just owning the data plane. You know, everyone talks about when they think about security, it's that data plane when the user is connected. Does the data stay in the data center? Is the traffic encrypted between the data center and my and my customer? But there's a whole other row of security there, which is the platform that's managing all of that, the control plane. And that's what we provide is the control plane. And by allowing you to self-host it, now you're the one who's taking care of the operating system updates for that. So you can make sure it adheres to your security policies. Any user data that's stored in the control plane, you know, their usernames, their email addresses, that's personal information that needs to be protected. And you can protect it using your security standards for your organization because you self-host it. So that's that's the biggest thing for our customers is that they own the entire environment. It's not calling off to someone else's data center for any reason whatsoever. I know uh, you and I ahead of this call talked about how fast the, the year is going <laughs> by. Uh, as we're quickly coming up to the end of 2023 and heading into 2024, Maybe you could talk a little bit about what's coming up next for the rest of the year at LeoStream. Yeah, definitely. So I, I mentioned this is our, our second major release and well, well, it's October. <laughs> and so I thought that UTF-8 support, the SE Linux work, it, it was a big chunk of work. And that's why we're, it's the, the second release coming out now. And what we want to do in order to get some more functionality out into customers' hands faster is we're just going to kind of rapid fire releases for the rest of the year so we can get out some functionality related to um, you know, the dual universal prompt that's coming up. We support dual already, but we're making sure that people can migrate to the universal prompt ahead of its deadline coming up in March, putting out some additional functionality for scheduling assignments because we people want to like import calendar events so they know that pools of machines are uh, assigned to appropriate users based on those schedules more AWS support, a whole bunch of smaller features, nothing that requires the word refactor <laughs> until the, until next year. So you'll see a lot of that coming up for us. Well, that's great. That's uh, it sounds sounds like a lot of cool and uh, quick fire things that are coming up between now and the end of the year. So mm -hmm. I uh, look forward to hearing more on that. Uh, Karen, I've always enjoyed our conversations. So thank you again for joining VM Blog today. Oh, thanks very much for having me. Well, before I let you go, uh, if folks who are watching this video want to learn more about LeoStream and some of the things we talked about today, like your latest release, where can they go? Uh, you can always find information on our website at leostream.com. You can drop us a note at info at leostream.com. Perfect. Well, Karen, again, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you.